Daisy, she's down there just dying to bark. But I was going to show you this. Uh, I picked up this old Rusty. Probably made back in the 50s, maybe 60s. This is one of those um, high gauged, heavy duty, industrial benches that you used to find in the factories like in Detroit and Dayton and Cincinnati and stuff. And I found one of these today. And I'm going to convert it into an audio rack. Just because I know the gauge and the way that this, this thing is so solid. You know, they don't make, you know, audio racks that are this solid. But it's this thing's old. I don't know if you guys can see the rust. It's rusted. It's crusty. There's Daisy. Hello, Daisy. But anyway, I wanted to show you guys this before I started tearing it apart. Kind of show you the condition of it. I'm not worried about the rust and stuff. I'm gonna sand it down and, and repaint it. I haven't made up my mind what color I won't paint it yet, so. This is my next little project. I just got done grilling some pork chops and oh, they were so good. So, this is gonna be like my weekend project. It's Friday, so I'm gonna work on this all weekend. And I'm gonna get a fishing trip in sometime. So I just wanted to show you this before I start tearing it apart. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boy, look at her. She is disassembled. Nice, heavy gauge steel. I'm done with it today. There's the legs. I'll go over the dimensions and everything later in the video. But there she is, leaning up against the the herbs. Some Italian parsley, dill, some sage, cilantro. Oh yeah, daddy. Fresh herbs is wonderful in the summertime when you're cooking. But anyway, there she is. I'm gonna show you something else over here. It has 48 flathead nuts and bolts in here what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to I'm going to reuse those I'm not going to waste them and I'm going to let them soak in this let them soak in some coke Coca-Cola Classic let them soak in that Coke has uh, phosphoric acid, and sometimes it will it will remove the the rust. So we're gonna let it sit at that for right now. It tomorrow or the next time I work on it, I'm gonna pull them out and I take a wire brush and I'll wire brush them. And then I'm going to sand all this down and we're going to clean it up and put some paint on it and then reassemble it and it'll be a fantastic wreck. So stay tuned for the finished product. All right, Saturday morning. But I'll just kind of show you. This took me a couple minutes with that sander. I've got some heavy duty grit. What do we got here? extra course 40 that's not the right pad but guess what it'll work i got it on there but i just want to show you sanding that rust off of it rust comes off fairly fairly easily this is the worst piece or oh, the squirrels and the birds are fighting sorry about that but anyway i'm just kind of giving you a little update here in the process of sanding the electric sander give you a little sample half not sanded half is and I'm not going we're not going for perfection here okay we're just going to do our best because they make paint the paint nowadays is really good it's a lot better than it used to be 
especially with dealing with this kind of stuff, rust and whatnot. I haven't decided what color I'm going to paint this yet. It's so big, I might go with a little darker color because if you go with a lighter, like a, let's say like a lime green, it may stick out a little bit too much. So I don't know. I haven't made up my mind what I'm going to do yet. Who knows? Few, about 15 minutes later, I'm not going to bore you with all this sanding, but I'm going to give you one little, one more quick peek. This is the worst piece. Um, this is high carbon steel. Okay, it's going to be ugly while you're working it because, you know, it's it'll rust. It'll it has a more carbon in the steel, which will make it rust. But it also makes it much better. makes it much better it's more solid so last little peek here those right there will be nice and easy they don't have much rust on them at all it's they are painted I'm not gonna worry about stripping the paint off of it we're gonna just do the best we can the next time you see this I'll be doing the uh, primary with some white primer this is the paint I went to the store got me some paint this is the primer this is the paint I'm gonna paint it it's a uh, shell white rust-oleum satin protective enamel superior covers this is a good paint I was looking to get some of this I don't know what the color of this is But anyway, I was looking to get this. They didn't have any of this. I had some of this left over. I'm going to put a uh, put a little bit of that on the cabinet. I'll have to show you. I'm going to cut a wood and put an inlay in there. I'm going to paint it that that turquoise. I was kind of wanting to get a uh, like a gray, like a creamy blue gray. They didn't have a whole lot, so this will work. This will work. This shell white. The painting process has begun. Kind of show you where we're at now. But they're working on the paint. So I'm going to finish painting it. I'm going to clean up those uh, bolts, nuts and bolts. I'm going to put it back together and then I'll get back with you. There she is. It's Sunday morning. Daisy's over there enjoying this. It was 57 degrees this morning. It's absolutely gorgeous out here today. But there she is, put back together. The eggshell white turned out beautiful. Kind of talk about this real quick. This is where the exciting part for you audiophiles might enjoy. Now, this top part here. It's re it's recessed as you can see. Oof. It's recessed, and I could have flipped this over and made it flat. But the reason I didn't is is because I made uh, the wind bloom down right here. I've got these uh, these styrofoam inserts. I just cut. So I'm going to put some styrofoam inside of here to isolate it because, you know, it's metal. But you put styrofoam in there and it'll it'll deaden the sound. You could you could put whatever you want in that. You could put sandbags. You could put a uh, an inner tube from a bicycle and let it float on air. You could put isolation pads, gel pads, whatever. You know what I mean? The height is perfect. It's about 28 inches. And then it's by, I think, 20 inches by 28 inches. So I'm going to put the styrofoam inside there, which will, it will fill this up to the top. And then I've got another, I was going to paint this blue, but I wasn't sure if I had enough paint. So here's a piece of wood that I cut. And that's going to sit on top of the styrofoam. And, you know, you could use, you could, 
level your turntable on the wood. That way everything's nice and flat. You know, beam, turntable's going on top. Plenty of room here. You know, you could put, you could actually even use it this way, a more narrow way. It's 20 inches wide. You could use it either way, depending on however you want to put it in your in your listening space. To me, though, this is beautiful. It's an old, you know, probably, I was thinking about it. This thing might even have been made back in the 40s. It's very heavy. I twisted my ankle moving it around. I mean, it's, it is solid. You could put hundreds and hundreds of pounds of stuff on this. It's not going to, it's not going to bend. It has... The bolts cleaned up real nice. It has four uh, steel bolts in each corner. Very heavy duty, thick gauge steel. I mean, that is not some. I'd say that's an American made. Probably this. They probably made these in Detroit back in the day, back when they were making '57 Chevys. And if you know anything about '57 Chevys, you know that you could stand on the damn hood of one of those and not worry about denting it in because they're just such solid cars. So, what I want to do now is I'm going to let this finish drying. I'm going to put the inserts in. And I'm going to put some gear on here. I'm going to let it sit right here. I'm going to go get some get a turntable and some stuff. And I'm going to kind of give you a visual of what it looks like with some stereo equipment on it. I just love it. I, this is going to be my main audio rack. I just love that I, that I found this and I was able to repurpose it. It's, it's absolutely perfect for what I need. I mean, I can put everything I need on it. It's the right size, and it'll handle anything. It's beautiful. So let me put some gear on it, and I'll show you. I'll show you this real quick. This is, this is the styrofoam inserts. See how it's recessed here. And then the, the wood shelf's going to go right on top of that. The wood shelf is cut to fit in here perfectly. Beautiful. Nice. Kind of show you that. Now nothing's wired, but I'm just kind of giving you a visual aid. Kind of show you. There's some things on there. Put your little record stand there if you wanted. You see how nice, how nice and level this is. I mean, it's. I didn't get the styrofoam under there. Beautiful. You know, you could also take, there's enough room, you could probably put your preamp, just put your preamp back here, behind your turntable even. I mean, it's just absolute perfect, perfect little rack. It's 34 inches from, you know, from the ground up, which, which is absolute, the perfect height for record player right that's it for this project I just wanted to share it with you man thanks for hanging out